Game got messed up. The only way we can do this is draw fields. They won't let us qualify. They're running us last. Twenty left. Are they mad at us? Are they mad at us? Well, Marshall, what do you think about uh, the fact that you guys ain't getting to qualify? Is that a typical treatment here, or is that just uh, just kind of a stroke of bad luck tonight? Uh, I say it's probably a little bad luck. Uh, we got one lap qualifying last time. Uh, we're running the last event too, but it, I, I think drawing peels is, is kind of kind of a bad way for us to start because uh, none of us really know what the track's going to do tonight, and qualifying may give us a little hint as what the track's going to do. We're just going to have to put it out there and hang on for 35 laps, see what we can do. Any idea where you're going to start? No, we, we're not going to draw numbers till we go way in. We're getting ready to go way in now, so we'll know something after we weigh in. Well, Miller Shep, how about it? So what are your thoughts about uh, the way the treatment here tonight at South Boston? Uh, I think we're get, being treated as stepchildren. If they're going to treat us that way, we just won't come back. But it's not fair to put us last. A lot, it's a lot of rubber on the tracks at the end, and these cars don't operate very well like that. All right, real gut feel. How do you think you're going to do tonight, all things considered? Well, uh, we had to draw for position since they wouldn't let us uh, have time trials, and I drew 48 out of 52 chips, so uh, I'm going to be in the back somewhere. Well, the thing I get concerned about when I'm in the back is uh, there's usually uh, more activity in the back, if you know what I mean. So I'll be concerned about moving around that, so that'll be the biggest concern. Let's get this guy here that's bugging us in the back. Morgan. So, hey, oh, oh, so uh, all things considered, what's your gut feel about tonight? Well, I don't like it. I think they should let us qualify, you know. But when there ain't a whole lot you can do about it, you take what you can get. Uh, as far as uh, where you drew, you have any idea? No, I haven't drawn yet, so I don't know. Covington, gut check real quick. Uh, all things considered, how do you think you're going to run here tonight? I don't know. I drew a pretty bad spot there, 34. The car's not quite up to snuff, so we'll just see what happens. I think we had a pretty good show. All righty, thanks. How are you going to do tonight? Great. Starting third, I guess. I drew number three. Gut check. How do you think you're going to do tonight, all things considered? Well, I think we do fine. we got a bad number on qualifying, but we'll bring it up front. You feel comfortable about this track? How was that? You feel comfortable about the track? Oh, yeah, I love the track. Love the track. Landon, how do you think about the uh, all things considered your gut check tonight for uh, for tonight's race? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's tough. We're making it tough on ourselves though. We uh, car's not running for some reason. We keep getting the miss of the motor. We've had it for the last three weeks and we can't find it. So we'll just see how it goes tonight. Gut check. Uh, how do you feel about this track? All things considered tonight. It's bumpy. That's all I can say. It's just bumpy. Uh, if you end up in the middle. What's your game plan? Well, probably the first 10 laps or so, I'm going to wait and see how everybody else is doing. And maybe uh, if they're trying to work my, my way when the cars get spread out a little bit, just pick my way through the, uh, the traffic. Oh, here we go. Let's get. It's the guy with a magic finger. OK. Hey, gut check here, Walter. Here we go. Yeah, looking forward to a good race tonight. One more time. What do you want? One. One. Lucky shit. Four. I'm oh, really excited. I hope we finish up there in the top five. Hey, I like hey, to win one. Hey. All things considered, gut check. What do you think about tonight? I don't know. It's only the second race. <laughs> uh, it don't matter to me. I ain't got the practice none or anything, so, you know, whatever they want to do. Um, I'm winning tonight. Ah, my foot. I'm, I'm Alan Morgan. It's Clipper's body. <laughs> you, you fooled us all. All right. We'll see what happens. Well, I think we'll be, I think we'll be up there. This uh, DNF full Thunderbird is running real good, and I think we'll be able to um, – get to the front it all depends on how we draw and where we end up at starting uh i feel honestly no no lie to me first lie to you feel good <laughs> about everything here but uh <laughs> uh i think we came a long ways to keep on getting put to the back last 
you know, it's it's really tough, you know. And a lot of debris can get on the track for us, and you know, and it's. I just wish we could get up better. It makes you not want to come back. Kinda, yeah. We're set for the green flag, the NASCAR series at South Boston Speedway. John Hatch and Matt will start on the pole. Tony Rob Ford on the outside of front row. Row number two is consistent Larry Walker and first time runner Kevin Rexford. And remember Matt, who's starting on the pole through that position. Here there was no qualifying here in South Boston. Matt will lead them off of turn number two, Ford in the line second. Here comes the challenge for second spot. It's Tom Dance. He'll shoot to the inside. Contact going into turn number three. Bat loots it sideways. Others are going to get involved here as everyone tried to take evasive action. Joe Covington, car number seven, slams the retaining wall. And we're going to go under caution. Covington severely damaged. And he led the points coming into this event at South Boston Speedway. But right now, we'll look. He'll climb out of the car. So Joe Covington is OK. But the Hooters number seven showing severe damage before we got the first lap complete of our 40 lap feature. We're gonna go back to green now, complete restart. It'll be Larry Waltrip inheriting the pole this time. He'll start us alongside Rob Thornton and we'll watch him head into turn number one. The rookie gets down into the end, loose stuff, drops it down to the bottom. Larry Walter comes out with the lead. He holds on to it, but here comes Tom Dance once again. Dance will split him down the back stretch, take the lead. Thornton goes to second. Kevin Rexroad holds third. The battle now goes for fourth. It's Willie Wine Sr. on the high side. He'll go against Larry Waltrip. Corey Barger getting a little loose in car number nine. He has to gather it back in. We will watch the top three start to break away. The battle for fourth is over, and it will belong to Sam Millisham. Car number five, Jason Eberth, sets in the fifth spot. Six to Willie Wine Sr., seventh to Larry Waltrip, eighth to Lanny Pemberton, and the ninth spot will be car number one, Bobby Marshall. Tenth is held by Barger, but he's getting a challenge. Willie Wines Jr. on the high side. Down low, it's Jeff Sims, car number 13. Three wide as they hit the stripe, and it's going to be Sims taking position as they go into turn number one and now another rookie contender Mike Matthews as we see one car losing a wheel that's car number 88 Billy Cook we're under caution again we set to return to green It'll be Tom Dance showing the way. Rob Thornton setting second. Third spot held by Sam Melsham. Fourth, Jason Ebert. Fifth, Kevin Rexroad in his first appearance with the series out of Harrisonburg, Virginia, that young band. In the turns one and two, clean, and Dance starts to break away. Thornton gets high coming off turn number two. That's going to allow a challenge down for the third spot as we see. Eberth had to back out just a bit. Sam Millishan gets a run to the inside. It's side by side for the third spot. And just ahead, Thornton getting a little loose, working off turn number four. He holds on to the spot, and Eberth will be able to hold on to the third position. Millishan falls back in line four. Lanny Pemberton drifting back. He's had problems with that ride all day long. The crew unhappy with the setup. Couldn't get the power out of the car. And they've been fighting the issue all day long. He falls back. We're turning attention back up to our front runners. It's Dance continuing to pull away. Thornton holding second. But Ebert starting to close in. And just behind it, Sam Millisham waiting to challenge on Ebert. A side by side battle down the back stretch. It's Willie Wine Sr. in the car number 11. Actually, it's painted up like the old school number one. But he changes to an 11. Bobby Marshall carrying the one. He goes alongside Kevin Rexroad, closing in on that battle. Jeff Sims, you see him flash by. Here comes Larry Walter, who's drifting back through the pack, trying to regain composure after nearly running down into the dirt on that restart. He's trying to pick up some positions. And side by side with Rexroad and Wines, and side by side with Sims and Marshall. Those four work up off turn number four and to the stripe. And what a battle it is as they race into turn number one. Looks like Wines has the preferred line. He's got that little bit higher groove in here in South Boston. You want to run a little bit higher up off the turn, not right down to that yellow stripe. You bind the car up a bit down there. They nearly get together going through turn number three. Wines will end up in the position. Marshall looks like he might take over the next spot, but Sims is challenging on the inside. He can't get the run. He'll try it once again through turns one and two. Decides to fall in line, single file as the rest of the field. Work through the high banks of turns one and two. Four tenths of a mile, South Boston Speedway. And this is the second visit of 1996 for the NASCAR Series. As I told you, Joe Covington is the series points leader coming into this event. 
and we're going back to a restart now. You didn't get to see that last caution, but a slight altercation, actually a little uh, debris left on the speedway, but that sends us back to a restart with Tom Dance showing the way. He has been since lap number one. Rob Thornton still holds the second spot, and now we see the battle for fourth. It's Willie Wine Sr. going against Sam Millisham, and they have to split the car of Alan Morgan. That's his first run, car number 61, painted up like a Cliff Sales ride. Of course, one of Sales' old bodies, Morgan Barnett, for this event. We look forward to future runs from Alan Morgan. Further back in the pack, it's Larry Morgan, Alan's brother, Larry Waltrip in the number 69, the 18 of Mike Matthews, two rookies and a second-year competitor going at it as they work down the backstretch. They'll all have to work around the lap ride of Alan Morgan, and they're able to do so. Ooh, getting a little tight there as Matthews just barely squeezes between the two Morgans. A Morgan sandwich with Mike Matthews as the meet in between. Morgan now gets the run on Waltrip. He'll take that position way further back. It's KC Walker trying to move up through the field, started a distance back. Remember, they all drew for starting positions, no qualifying, and the drivers were a little upset about that tonight, and uh, reasonably so, as they had about six rookies in the top ten. As a matter of fact, a couple of them only getting their first run. You can see Joe Covington has returned to the speedway. He's been in for service, got that machine repaired, but it looks more like a modified than a late model or a Winston Cup car, which these cars are supposed to resemble. Covington continues on his way, trying to pick up all the points he can in the 1996 points chase. He's looking for the South Boston Championship due to his commitments with Hermie Sadler. He's unable to run the full series, but he wanted to win the South Boston Championship as possible. He was the 1995 runner-up in the point standings. We see the two rookies going at it. Larry Waltrip, who leads the rookie standings, and Mike Matthews, who's in the rookie hunt as well. The Renegades Racing Machine, car number 18. They'll race side-by-side side through turns one and two, and just behind, can't see who that is. They're distance back on the back stretch. I believe it's Mike Myers in car number 28. Myers trying to take a peek to the inside of both those drivers. And they work cleanly through turn number three, up off turn number four, and they continue to go wheel to wheel for that position. That's about 10th on the speedway. Myers trying to close in. We see the first appearance of Ed Millisham. Millisham a little loose off two that time. There's a little slight bump coming up off turn number two, and it unsettles these cars. Here they go, wheel to wheel once again, and they get together coming up off turn number four, Larry Waltrip and Mike Matthews, and we see the body has been ripped away from the right rear on Larry Waltrip's ride. Now, how long that'll stay? He may suffer a black flag if it continues to do so. Well, say goodbye to it. It's left on the back stretch, or actually coming off turn number two, and now we see uh, how exactly the roll cage is set up on the rear of a mini Winston. That put us under caution, and we're set for a restart once again as it has been since lap number one on that uh, first, or make that the second restart there. Tom Dance shows the way over Rob Thornton. Jason Eber setting third, fourth, Sam Millisham fifth is still Bobby Marshall. Marshall, a strong run tonight. As a matter of fact, the Pepsi people gave his crew the sweet, the Pepsi sweet here at South Boston. Marshall bringing a great deal of fans down to watch him in a run, and he's having a strong one. Further back in the pack, some more battles. Jeff Barnett, his first run in the Mass Car Series, car number 63, and that's a familiar task to me, the one he uh, bought for me, as a matter of fact, bought from the uh, Mass Car Shop. Right now, he's still unable to get it quite dialed in. Of course, he's only in his second run. He made a, a short run in last week's events as he ran a 40-lapper for the south side points. Mike Myers lent him his car, but he's still trying to get that uh, learning curve worked out. And right now, it looks like the rear deck being missing on Larry Waltrip's car is helping him out. Maybe without the downforce to the rear, that ride's loosened up a bit and give him just exactly what he needed in his setup. Carol Lewis and Thomas Richards are obviously upset about that rear deck being missing, but right now their driver's starting to storm through the field. Kevin Rex Road, car number 23, and car number 11, Willie Wine Sr. go at it. And we see now, working through turns one and two, it's Lanny Permanent, car number 87, the 28 of Mike Myers, the 16 of Ed Millisham, and the 76 of John Bat. Bat trying to fight his way back through the field. Remember, he started on the pole for this event in only his third run with the Mass Car Series, drawing the pole. He was a little nervous about it earlier on tonight. And he said he was just going to drop down out of the way, but unfortunately, he got booted out of the way on lap number one. KC Walker, Willie Wines Jr., and Jeff Arnett. Now Corey Barger comes into the picture. Corey Barger, the Midlothian driver, who 
see Bat getting a little loose as he worked off turn number four, running about 85 to 90 miles an hour in the straightaways, believe it or not, and they'll drop it down to the upper 70s in the turns. The NASCAR series, the Eagle Cup cars, 26 cars starting tonight's event. And that was the largest field at South Boston. And they forced them to run last. Again, that upset the drivers because they ran last last time they were here. And, uh, but regardless, they put on a great show. The fans sticking around to watch every lap of the mass car series. As uh, we could see, the first lap gave them plenty of reason to as Covington slammed the wall, got airborne. We're glad to see Covington's okay back out there to pick up those points. There he goes, Joe Covington, car number seven, the Hooters machine. Naturally fresh also on that ride. He'll continue on his way. Lanny Pemberton and Larry Waltrip going at it there. As I told you, Waltrip, oh, got one car looping and getting together. John Bat, Luke, Casey Walker got into the side of him. But both cars continuing very slow on the speedway. No caution has fallen yet. And we keep an eye on him. John Bat just motors on. Casey Walker very slow. And we look to the flag stand. There is no caution. We'll continue racing. Watch Corey Barger, Cliff Sales, car number six, and the 35 of Willie Wines Jr. work down the back stretch and into turns three and four. Lap number 26, I believe, up on the scoreboard now. Hard to read the scoreboard here at South Boston Speedway. Several of the lights missing, and as a matter of fact, I can't even tell if it's 26 or 36 up on board. KC Walker continues on the way. John Bat, he stopped in pits for service. Well, right now, with the lead pack has flashed by. They work by Billy Cook. He's back out on the speedway after putting that wheel back on that he lost earlier. Actually, on lap number three, I believe it was. Cliff Sales flashes by Joe Covington, Willie Wines Jr., Corey Barger. And they all get by, and the leader works into that pack as well. And now we see a nudge to the rear. Car number four gets turned. Rob Thornton gets into the rear of our leader, Tom Dance. Dance loops it around. No caution has fallen. And Tom Dance, the series points leader, the race leader, has been spun off turn number two. We're waiting for some official action here. Tom Dance continues on his way, but he's obviously upset. He may be waiting for Thornton, and now we see the black flags will go on Rob Thornton from the flag stand, so Rob Thornton has received the black flag. He will get a, a slow and go penalty. They don't ensue a stop and go with these cars due to the clutch system. And we see Dance now drastically trying to chase down Thornton, perhaps a reminder. He'll get up right on his rear deck. A slight nudge coming off turn number four, but that's all he's gonna do. As they work to the front stretch, he sees that the black flag has been shown on Rob Thornton. Now, if he does anything serious here, he could be parked for the night himself. It looks like Thornton is going to heat to the black flag. Tom Dance stays on the lead lap, but the leader now becomes Jason Ebert, and Ebert only about two car lengths from lapping Tom Dance. We'll see if this will do anything to the points chase later on, but it's Jason Ebert showing the way. Sam Millisham setting second. They're just behind series points leader Tom Dance. Jason Eber inheriting the lead after Dance gets spun, Thornton gets black flag. Sam Millisham moves up into the second spot. Third spot, believe, now belongs to car number 60, Larry Morgan. Fourth spot belongs to Bobby Marshall in car number one. That's your top four as they continue to race around the speedway. Laps winding down here. Originally scheduled for a 35 lap event, but they made it a 40 lap feature. And perhaps that was NASCAR's way of letting them know see the official up there in the flag stand along with the mascot official make sure you don't stab him in the back because mascot felt like they got stabbed in the back when we showed up tonight but perhaps that's a uh, mascot's way of letting them know hey uh you know we come down here first you want to run us 25 laps then you don't want to give us qualifying then you don't you know you don't want us to run till last that's right the mascot series making its point I mean, coming down here with all kinds of giveaways. They gave koozies out all through the infield areas, all the other drivers, visors out to all the fans. But let's turn our attention back to the racing action. There's Larry Morgan, third in the running order right now. The DNF Plumbing sponsored ride. Whoa, three wide going into turn number one. Car number 53. 
That machine is Alan Mason, Cliff Sales in car number six, and the one of Bobby Marshall. Marshall running fourth, putting a lap on these rides. He'll get through clean. Marshall still sawing on that wheel a bit as he works through turn number four. Here's our buddy Jeff Barnett once again. The Dominion Equipment Company, the sponsor on his new ride. Black, blue, and white, the paint scheme. He's still trying to get it dialed in. That's okay. This is a tough track to uh, get your learning curve on. This is one of the fastest tracks mass car runs on. This is Southern National Speedway. Still plenty of fans here to watch the racing action as it's uh, about midnight here in South Boston, Virginia, which, of course, we know is miles and miles and next about two hours from Richmond. <laughs> but our cameraman, he's, he's got uh, plenty of energy left in him as he was flown in by the crew uh, make it the tech inspector for NASCAR, Jamie Wheatley, and we appreciate Jamie doing that for the NASCAR series, flying in some of our crew. Battles on the racetrack, it's Tom Dance. He stayed on the lead lap. He, he's got a couple of cars now as a buffer between him and Jason Eber. Checkered flag falls, it's Jason Eber. If your winner's second place, we'll go to Sam Millisham, but wait a minute. Sam Millisham was DQ'd in a post-race tech inspection. Say goodbye 